Welcome to NSG 412 Study Session 9 Historical Overview of School Health Services. Introduction. In this study session, we will clarify important concepts in school health nursing. We will also state the historical and present state of school health nursing and explain the reasons for school health services. Learning outcomes. When you have studied this session, you should be able to define important concepts in school health nursing and explain reasons for its services. When New York City was faced with an outbreak of smallpox in the 1860s, no mechanism was in place to provide free vaccinations to those who needed them. So the Board of Health turned to the schools. Education officials agreed to permit inspection of school children to determine whether or not they had been vaccinated. And in 1870, smallpox vaccination became a prerequisite to school attendance. In the late 1860s and early 1870s, the New York City Board of Health instituted a program of sanitary inspections of all public schools twice a year. These inspections revealed a filthy environment and excessive crowding. Modern plumbing was non-existent, and schools were sometimes overrun by rats. Frequently, more than 100 students occupied a single small classroom. Classrooms lacked ventilation and fresh air, a problem exacerbated by using stoves for eating and gas lights for illumination. These problems continued in New York City, even into the early 20th century. In 1902, Lillian Ward demonstrated in New York City that nurses working in schools could reduce absenteeism due to contagious diseases by 50% in a matter of weeks. For minor conditions, nurses treated students in school and instructed them in self-care. The First World War marked a turning point in the history of school health programs. It sensitized American educators and the public to the health needs of the school children. It was discovered that 34% of the examined drafts for the military had adverse physical, mental, and emotional condition, making them unfit for service. This raised the concern whether the school could have prevented or corrected these conditions. Great emphasis was thereafter placed on the health of the school child. However, this emphasis was erroneously skewed in favor of physical education, as if it was the same as health education. Hence, the desired improvements were not met. Again in 1944, during the Second World War, 4 million out of 13 million recruits aged between 18 and 37 years were found unfit for military service. The existing school health program was therefore adjudged a failure. The efforts that followed us culminated in the present status of school health in Europe and America. For major illnesses, nurses visited the homes of children who had been excluded from school because of illness or infection, educated parents on their child's condition, provided information on available medical and financial resources and urged the parents to have their child treated and returned to school. School nurses began to assume a major role in the daily medical inspection of students, treatment of minor conditions, and referral of major problems to physicians. By 1911, there were 102 cities employing cadres of school nurses. In 1913, New York City alone had 176 school nurses. In Nigeria, an attempt was made in 1929 to introduce a medical service that could cater for school children. A scheme was proposed that entrusted school inspection to health practitioners with special training in that field and twice a year examination of the children 
throughout their school years. In 1944, the Christian Council of Nigeria called attention to the high incidence of malnutrition among school children and hoped that governments would inaugurate the proposed school medical service. In 1952, the government of Western Nigeria published a policy white paper that contained a four-year plan to introduce a school medical service that would be free to all children. In 1971, a school health service aided by a medical officer and nurses and other health practitioners emerged at the federal government level in Lagos. Special clinics were set up to serve as treatment points for school children with minor ailments in some state capitals and large towns like Ibadan, Enugu, Kaduna, Bini City, Zaria, and Jos. In many states, the school health service units were maimed by public health sisters with occasional input from physicians. School health program in Nigeria has passed through many phases to metamorphose into what we have today. Present state of school health service. Prior to the formulation of the National School Health Policy in 2006, there had been a gross neglect of school health program in Nigeria. A national study of the school health system conducted by WHO in collaboration with the Federal Ministries of Health and Education revealed that healthcare services in schools were suboptimal. A high proportion, 80%, of health teachers did not note that pre-admission medical examination should be made compulsory in their schools. Food and glass were screened in only 17% of schools before requirements. A high proportion, 83% of the schools did not have school nurses, and only smaller proportions, 6% of the schools have linkages with government-designated clinics. Only 25% of the schools have ventilated pit latrine, and just 46% had pipe burn water or bore oil. Rational School Health Services 1. It is one of the ways of improving the health of children. 2. The school is a center of risk. The school child faces many risks like accidents, emotional stress, communicable diseases, etc. 3. School children at this age undergo several physical, emotional, and developmental changes, which may have immediate and long-term effects on their health, in turn, their education. 4. Teaching about health in the school is usually more effective than teaching about it elsewhere. Study Session Summary In this study session, we clarified some important concepts in school health nursing. We also stated the historical and present state of school health nursing and explained the reasons for school health services. End of Study Session 9